hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Tissy for this that new here in today's video as you could have seen from the title I'm going to be sharing my experience or my family's experience dealing with dermoid cyst on an infant yes I will say infant to a toddler my daughter is going to be three next um, month and this thing happened I would say as early as maybe when she was three months old till when we finally overcame it last year so this everything that happened uh, or I'm going to talk about in this video ended a year ago so um, yeah if you have a child that maybe um, you noticed something on their bodies or on their face or anything or this topic just interests you just to see how maybe we dealt with it and um, this video is for you I'm not a medical practitioner I'm just a mom that really cares about her child I'm a Christian mom as well and how this entire I will call it an ordeal <laughs> that's what I will call it but yeah it's gonna be a story time so you might want to get comfortable get your coffee get your mugs and let's get right into this video okay so with this video I'll try to make this video as detailed as possible and the reason I'm making it as detailed as possible is because um it might be important for other parents that are going through this or they've gone through this and um, when I was researching myself these were things that I wish people shared and um, I'm going to be sharing that in this video so let's go back to 2020 which is three years ago I just had a baby it was in during the pandemic um, you guys know I had to birth my daughter you know go for my appointments alone everything alone obviously with the Holy Spirit with me on the day she was born I still have not shared my birth story maybe sometime in the future but not at the moment and I was just there later my I fell into labor I would say around 1 or 2 p.m. and my daughter was born some minutes to 11 p.m. so maybe even after I think she was born 10 something just some minutes to 11 p.m. and all through that I was alone until I'll say the last um, two hours where my husband was letting into the world because of COVID obviously so she was born healthy baby everything was great she weighed a little bit um she was she wasn't a big baby my daughter is quite slim she was a small baby but I mean the doctor said she was healthy weights everything was good fast forward um I mean the usual challenges with being a mom I would say three months later Right, so when she was like three months old, I love my daughter so much. She's like a blessing to my light to my life. I take a lot of pictures of my daughter. You know, just like any mom, if I have let me say hundred thousand pictures, I'm sure fifty thousand is of my daughter. So I just I was taking her pictures one day, and I noticed a swelling on the top of her brow now, and I just thought, mm, did she hit her head? Did she fall? Did someone carry her? But it wasn't anything serious. It was just a small swelling just like when you draw your eyebrows higher than the other you know how you look raised it was just that so I didn't think of anything to it I just touched it and it was it, it, there was no bump so I was like okay that's fine it just looked swollen a bit right next month it became a little bit more prominent the the brow became slightly big I think it's a left brow now before I could tell from my head which brow it was but I think it's the left brow or the right brow I think it's the left one anyway uh, if I'm wrong I'll correct myself and it just looked slightly raised and I'll compare to the other side that was flat but this one looked like she was like this yeah she looked like she was like this so now this is I'm a first time mom you guys know throughout the pandemic we had no help nobody came to help even my parents that were supposed to fly into the country all the flights were delayed everything was just you know so there was really nobody I would say maybe I would say oh look at this and obviously we're not even going to church I would have maybe asked somebody in my church and you know video call is different from reality so I showed my husband, I was like, ah, babe, do you notice that, you know, my daughter's, you know, brows are a bit raised. It was like, mm, maybe it's because of all the, you know, when, we're, when you were trying to give birth to her, there was a lot of pushing and prodding and touching and maybe it's swelling from that. And I was like, ah, okay. So I called my friend, you know, my friend, my very good friend, Mercy. She's a mom of three now, but at that time she was a mom of two. So we talk, she's like my go-to for motherly advice, you know, when it comes to like infants, because she still has her... She's fresh memory. So I just told her in passing, I'm like, hey babe, this is what I noticed on my daughter's brow. She was like, oh, that, you know, obviously she tried to pacify me that it's nothing to worry about, but me measuring it, that was the first thing. So that's one thing I want you to, you know, have at the back of your, your mind. If you notice anything on your child, 
be very meticulous with the measurements so excuse me guys I started measuring it with my finger so when I say measure so the first day that I noticed it or the first time that I noticed it swell this was now month four or the second time the month four when I noticed it was swelling it was changing in size I, and I'll back all these things that I'm seeing with pictures you know hopefully I'm able to show the pictures on this video as I'm talking and I put my hand here and let me say it was like the width of her brow was like let me say like this so it wasn't to what nothing to worry about fast forward month five I noticed a significant rapid change now at month I think we started going to church when she was like maybe nine months but you see that between month five and month six there was a massive difference to the point where when I looked at her I just could not get my eyes off it it looked like when someone hits their head like on the sharp like the sharp edge of a wall and the swelling hasn't gone down so it wasn't like I could hold anything it wasn't like a 3d it just it was just swollen it was like fat yeah just like fatty tissue under so immediately obviously I'm not a negligent parent I reached out to my um, what they call them now health officer right she's come to the house to check her away and all of that and she was like you know what you're the mom if it worries you that much why don't you raise it with your GP so I rose it with my GP. GP was like, oh, because of COVID, they can't see her, blah, blah, blah. She's still an infant. She had not gotten all her immunizations, blah, blah, blah. At my six-week checkup, I would have shown them, but I had not noticed at that time. So obviously, I couldn't show them. So I was like, you know what? Let me reach out to the NHS itself directly. Because when she was born, I was able to um, speak to like, like a nurse there and we exchanged some um, email contacts and I still had the email. So I reached out to her. I'm like, oh, hi, this I remember me. I had a baby about four or five months ago. This is what I'm noticing with my daughter. I attach pictures. We would like to please um, see somebody about it. Obviously, they gave me a generic reply. You know, the children's hospital is shut down at the moment. They're only attending to life-threatening, like people that were involved in accidents, emergency, surgery-related cases, that since it's not affecting her mobility, it's not affecting her vision she's just a baby so i put my hand in front of her eyes she could see everything was fine that it's not i just need to wait i was like okay i wasn't too worried at that moment i was like okay, I'll, I'll wait it out you guys on the day my daughter turned six months we had a little you know six months party in the house we didn't invite anybody just myself my husband and we did like a zoom party with all our parents grandparents everybody and at that night, we took so many pictures and I was just scrolling through my phone. I was like, oh, so lovely. And I, there was one picture she looked to the side. And the projection of that brow was so obvious that you just could not neglect it. I was like, no. The next day, I woke up. I wrote another email. I'm like, you know what? I really, really need to see a doctor. Like, I really, really need to see somebody just to have this checked out, blah, blah, blah. You guys, my daughter was born in June. This was around, let me say, Christmas. I really see the door like, oh, it's during the holidays. The hospital is shutting down for the year, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, these people, they are not understanding. So the next day, I wrote another email. I said that um, this thing, I wrote a very lengthy mail that I'm extremely concerned about this. And I would like it checked out and i'm not happy with the feedback i've been getting blah 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 the doctor was like, okay you know what then they replied me maybe like a week later after i was calling back and forth and they were like okay you know they have a meeting an appointment with me an emergency appointment with a uh, what did they even call like a just a children's doctor so we went to the hospital me and myself and my husband this was i would say maybe around christmas and we went to the hospital we had her checked out the doctor had a look at her it was like that is just fatty tissue that it will settle with with time that she don't worry about it that they see something things like be common that it's possible maybe she fell or she hit her head and it will just settle with time you guys my gut instinct was telling me that that's not true but you know being an educated person and being a believer they're two different things entirely it takes the grace of god to be able to merge them and make informed spirit-led de decisions but i was like you know what you're saying no one has ever said that, oh, what happened to your daughter's eyes? You're just the only one. It's just your husband because people are because you live with her. That is not as noticeable. We had Christmas. Christmas was good. Fast forward. The following year around Easter. So let's sit down. She was nine, ten months. You guys. <laughs> this thing 
that was in a that was just a swelling I turned into like do you know like are you I'm gonna look for the English word just like a marble like a pebble that's the word like a pebble it had turned into like a pebble that I could move like if I did like this the pebble will move remember there was nothing inside it was just like fatty tissue it had turned into a pebble I did like this I did like this I now went on Google <laughs> pebble like substance or the object on the on child's eye infant's eye blah 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 and a whole lot of things congenital disease and uh, it's just a abnormal growth it's a cyst it's a shekinico tears were already me small thing I'm, i just hope i don't cry by the end of this video i was already emotional i said what is this but what god really helped me to do is instead of just reading the articles i actually went on google images so I went on Google Images and everything that I was seeing, it was like what my daughter, what I was noticing, but it wasn't quite like it. It just wasn't it. Till I stumbled on a picture and it was not even a real child's picture. It was like a, um, an animation of a child that looks exactly like my daughter, a Caucasian child, by the way. Around the same age group, the same size, everything. I was like, this is exactly what this thing looks like. And the thing said, infantile dermoid cyst in the frontal orbital area. I was like, yes, this is it. And that just took me into like a, a what would I call it? <laughs> a whirlwind or a loophole of, you know, m just so much content. I went on YouTube. I typed dermoid cyst on infant. I went on Instagram. used the hashtag dermoid cyst on infant. I was just on a online you know i know that's not really what research is but i was on the online research you know journey then i stumbled on a lady that had this dermoid cyst but she her parents never got hers removed so it got to a point where it grew so much her eye became droopy I've, the, it changed the shape of her skull and it grew to the point that it was until when she was even him a mom herself she was already in her maybe late 30s that she met a doctor I think Dr. Pimple Popper, that, that the lady, she actually had to now go in, they now had the surgery. And what she was doing is, because all those years she subjected her to bullying, she had to be wearing a fringe. I'll see if I can find the woman's details, but obviously I can't pull her pictures on my Instagram. But if I find it, I'll put it in the, just as reference. And she now finally got it removed. But obviously it had changed the way her brain developed because of the growth. I was like, <sighs> not my child, <laughs> you know? so that just triggered me even more another email they were like oh same reply the hospital is shut down then it's this considered cosmetic it's not going through we kept on going back and forth so my cousin i spoke to my cousin she lives in america and i told her that you know sis this she's like a sister to me i said sis this is literally what's going on i know she, i even showed her she was like she can't really see but she understands what i mean i mean i'm the one living with her i'm like how can you not see this thing I, it's so visible to me and obviously, you know, my mind started playing games with me. I would look at her sometime. It would look like she was shutting the eye. It was like this. I was like, God, what is this? I told my parents as well. My parents were like, you know what? Mafi Fale, like, don't be complacent with it. Get it checked out. My cousin, I said, you know, if it's really worrying you, why not go private? You know, why not go private? So then I was like, you know what, babe? I know we're saving. We have so many projects we want to do with money. Let's go private. If NHS is taking forever, at this time I would say she was almost a year old. If this this thing is taking forever, let's go private. So we now started. I went online. I downloaded a list of all the hospitals, you guys, <laughs> all the hospitals, all the children hospitals that had pediatric, <laughs> pediatric ophthalmology, pediatric ophthalmologists. Yes, that's what I was looking for in the UK. I downloaded everything I started from Scotland I had like a list so when we when I came with the list I think I streamlined them based on reviews and everything and I also went on their websites the ones that had specific things like cyst removal infant surgery those ones I think I came down to about maybe 15 hospitals so me and my husband we shared them we started calling them one after the other the first thing they'll ask you is what city are you living in Has she been checked out by NHS are you on any waiting list and how old is the child so when we answer everything, no, NHS is taking forever. We've not even gotten to see a proper ophthalmologist. We're not on any waiting list. She's a new, she's a child. She's almost one. As soon as you just tell them that she's almost one, you just tell you, no, they unfortunately cannot operate because of insurance issues on any child under the age of three. I was like, ah. so we started eliminating. Then we found one hospital in England that the doctor was willing to have a video consultation with us. 
and it said we'll pay 250 pounds we'll have the video not even in person video consultation it will assess the child via the video they will bring her to england they will have a thorough check then we'll, we'll agree on the prices and everything and then we'll pay out of pocket for it you guys when i checked the cost it was going to almost about six grand in naira now that's about six million naira yeah roughly about maybe five point something million so i was like you know for my child i would empty my life savings for my that's when i really understood what a mother's love was so even getting the appointment it took forever the doctor went on holiday for like six weeks <sighs> you guys she turned let's just say she turned one sha we had not we we're not able to book an appointment we are not was i was praying about this thing vehemently i'll go to church as i'm praying i'll be weeping in tears i know for some people will be like ah it's not a big deal but for me i was like god this is not what you promised me my child if i maybe later in life you know maybe years down the line if i feel a release i'll tell you some things that you know i would say happened to myself and my husband getting you know when i was pregnant having the baby some of the you know instructions that god gave us specifically for my daughter now or our daughter and the the significance of those things so we're not able to get an appointment everything was just you know into the hands of god prayerfully then i decided to you know follow up back again with nhs and i wasn't relent relenting on nhs anyway i followed up back with nhs and this was shortly after she was warned that you know covid was getting a bit better i think we'd be going to church for like two months everything was getting better not really open to the public but it was getting one well, now in i would say 2021 now at the end of 2021 so we went to i wrote again to them and this time i said it was affecting my mental health <laughs> i said it was tick it was zapping my joy every time i look at her i'm extremely worried it's on her face i don't want a situation where it grows into something that they will not start telling me early intervention should have solved it or whatever so I don't know, maybe, you know, I would obviously attribute it to, you know, the mercies of God and the favor of God. The guy that I was speaking to, like the, um, the, the nurse, the nurse assistant, he was like, you know what, you've been on this thing for almost a year now. I would see how I can slot you in an appointment with a proper consultant ophthalmologist and have you checked out. So let me say this was, um, past one year, I was saying when she was like maybe 14 months old. So maybe a year and a couple of months after. They gave us an appointment we go into nhs children's hospital here in scotland absolutely besides the you know getting there but absolutely fantastic service from the day we walked into that nhs in person forget the emails now they were very kind empathetic they understood my my concerns my husband is a little bit more quiet so obviously i was doing a lot of the talking in as much as he's the medical practitioner in the family my husband is a doctor is still um pharmacology not like um surgery so he was like, you know, he understood all the terminology and all the implications of, you know, going, being invasive with a child that age and all of that. And as soon as we walked in into the waiting area, they told us to wait. Obviously, I think we had to do COVID tests or something like that. Initially, everything was fine. We went in there and the doctor that saw her, the consultant, as soon as the lady's eyes on, I was like, oh, you've seen this before, that this is a dermoid cyst. And it was like, I shouldn't worry about it, that it's not going to change, you know, the quality of our life, according to him, as such. But it definitely needs to be removed because the thing grows at a certain phase over. And since it's not like she noticed it later in life, she's still an infant. So definitely to progressively grow into a bump, into a pebble-like bump. And at this point, this thing, I'll insert pictures. You could not, <laughs> you can't, you guys, hmm. Thank you, Jesus. It was obvious at this point. It had grown to even obvious. And I'll tell you why I know it was obvious. So when he saw it, he was like, you know what? There are three stages in NHS or three levels for emergency, like um, to treat for care. The first one is the, you know, A and E emergency. They need to treat you right on the spot. The second one is the, you know, you, you need to get maybe people down cancer, waiting list, blah, blah, blah. You need to get surgery done. It's it's important. You're just on a waiting list. Maybe transplants and whatnot. The third one is equally important, but you can be on the waiting list. And then there's another one, which they will put my child there. Since it's not affecting like her breathing, you know, core life functions, and it's almost like um, cosmetic, but not cosmetic, right? And she'll, she'll be on that waiting list. That when a slot opens up, they will let us know. And I was like, okay, so what does that mean? He was like, hmm between three months or upwards of another year i'm like 
a year again <laughs> when i already know the impact of just one year that i noticed from when she was three months what nine months difference that it has how would it look and i did not want now the thing is i wasn't coming from a place of vanity i was coming from a place of i did not want my daughter to go with the consciousness of that she had a bump on her eye and you guys because of the the way the thing was growing it was weighing on her eyelid to the point where i could see the droop nobody else could see it but i as a mother i could see the droop in my mind i said you're just saying your own we're going to get this thing fixed before my daughter is two that was my prayer to god so we left there i think i even left that appointment crying i got home i told i started doing my own research again so now back remember the former hospital that we went to the doctor and everything and the not went to that we were in communication i tried to you know revive that communication and just see you know how much is it going to cost should we get insurance so that at least we'll pay for insurance from insurance for healthcare and not having to pay the full lump sum of about six thousand something minus associated fees of traveling to england you know being admitted minus all of that cost so i already knew that this was going to cost quite a bit of money at that time and so i already said okay you know well, god you just need to make a way so we're trying to you know contact them and everything fast forward to about let me say march yeah let's say march 2022 march 2022 so that was last year so yeah she turned one nothing was done the thing was still growing in fact i said i was going to tell you why i knew it was growing we went to church one sunday and she was just playing you know then she was still trying to walk and someone said to me that can you share um, where I'll put it in English. What happened to your baby? I'll put it in English. I'll, uh, what happened to your daughter? I'll show for you, man. Did she hit her head? Ah, my heart just sunk. And that's one thing I didn't want. I didn't want to be a mom where my daughter had a visible, um, shall I call it an abnormality or you know something that was not that but would be commanding a concern. I'm see in life. I'm never. I don't like to be a victim. Anything I make people, even when I I don't feel too good. I don't like to post i'll be like oh i've been sick i hate it i hate pity party anything that will make me people would be telling me sorry or get well soon i despise it and that's just the way god has trained me anything that make people to be concerned for me in a neck in a you know like a prayer point i don't like that kind of thing i like to always err on the side of victory on the side of jesus has paid for my sins and um, in fact let me be the encourager not i, I don't want to always be needing you know people I, you know there's some people that they love when people are like, hey, yeah, well, I, I, I don't like it. So that thing really weighed me down that day. And I know she acts out of care, obviously, but ah, I was like, you know, people are now noticing this thing. And, you know, it was really beginning to bother me. So fast forward around March, I was like, you know what, babe, enough of this procrastination. I called the office in England. I'm like, you know what, we are ready to do this procedure. Is the doctor back? You're like, oh, yeah, he's back. We'll put you on some something list to get the, I'm like, I'm paying for this thing. So she was like, okay. So I think we also prayed my husband would be agreeing that God will get... I used to refresh my emails like every day. I went to online. I called them. I called them. I said, I, I, you know, I was so emotional. I told the lady on the phone that, you know, she's really little. She's going to be two in about, you know, three months. I don't want this thing to go past her second birthday. I don't want it before she starts going to nursery proper. I don't want children to be touching it. At this point, I will insert the, um, pictures as well. You could not ignore it and the lady said okay she'll see what she can do so that same day she got back to me she was like okay she's been able to get a slot for me with the doctor for the this is just for the consultation no, that we're paying for not even for the procedure that she's gonna send me the invoice now i think it was about 250 pounds for the video consultation that i should pay and then she'll schedule it for the following week for us to speak to the doctor i was like okay no problem so as soon as i dropped the call i called my husband i'm like you know i've spoken to them they said she, it was a thank god at least that once they send me the invoice by the close of the day, we will make the payments. It was like, fine. You guys, our God is so good. He's a God of just on time. Literally, I would not, it's not even up to an hour after I made that call. They just called me from NHS. And they were like, oh, hello. Um, we're just calling from NHS. I was like, what? They were like, yes, that um, they've been able to get an appointment date for my daughter to have a thorough check and actually do the procedure in about they were like um how soon are you available i'm like please if you say we should come now 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 i will go and carry her what am i doing i'll lock all the shop every all the business let's go they were like okay that that's a bit too soon that okay that what about the upper week 
Saturday and they just suggest that before then we should um be we should isolate ourselves because of COVID you know we need to take COVID tests and everything well like, okay that's fine ah you know they say David danced I danced danced that I was like God I know that your plan for my life is not for me to be using my money for healthcare challenges, you know. So I was so grateful that ah, NHS called me. You guys, the plot twist is still coming, you know. So just stay with me. And I danced, danced, danced. My husband was so happy. We isolated. We didn't go to church for that Sunday. I was just praying, you know. We did online church. Everything was good. We went to the hospital on the day of the surgery. They told us to come a day before fasting. She shouldn't eat anything. And you guys know, if you have a child that is almost two, having them not eat for about four hours five hours is really tough so we went to the hospital we got admitted um the first thing they did was they drew our blood just to check i think now another concern that the doctors that we had contacted had is that the surgery would have needed to be done under full anesthesia like full anesthesia and because she's a child under three they are not they don't recommend children that young going under anesthesia for long hours because of brain damage issues and I was like, ah, brain damage. I want to go and remove cysts. Somebody may, somebody not come out with something even worse, you know? So I was really, they, they, first of all, things when we go to the hospital, they drew our blood, they checked the blood levels just to be sure that, I don't know if it's the blood count or hemoglobin or something was right enough for surgery so that she won't fall sick after, recovery will be easy. Even if they were not doing anything, you know, blood infusion related. Tell me why they come back and they were like, you know, our blood count was a bit low. So the doctor suggested that we should do a blood transfusion. We were like, ah, blood transfusion. So we said, okay, whatever they say. We did the blood transfusion for about, I would say maybe three hours. She had to be on the spot. I'll see if I can insert pictures. Oh, God. I don't wish this experience on my enemy. Even like, God, I thank you. Even just getting the cannula into our hands, it was like war. We finally did the blood transfusion. It was done. Everything was, you know, okay. They removed it. They came to check again. They said it was okay. Then, a night before the surgery, they were like, she could just take only clear liquids. By the way, you guys, my daughter was hungry. She had not eaten. They were like, okay, they were going to do a COVID test before the next day surgery. I was like, okay, that's fine. So they took another COVID test for her. The next morning, the surgery was supposed to be for, I would say, 11 a.m., right? So when, lovely, sweet, they treated us like it was in a five-star experience, very lovely. It was a new hospital, very beautiful. So around, I would say maybe around 9 in the morning, the doctor came in and he looked so downcast. Ah, I am eating jam, like, I was already getting scared. I was like, what's going on? And he just sat down on the bed and he was like, what, you're, what I'm about to say you would not like it. I'm like, oh my God, what is all this? After, you know, three hours blood transfusion, it was like her COVID test came back positive. They cannot do the surgery. Tears just started flowing from my eyes. I just started, I, I wept. I was like, God, what is this? They were like, so we shouldn't leave the room. We needed to pack our things immediately and leave the hospital environment because they had other vulnerable children in the world. And my daughter had been going to, they had a little prayer area, she had been going there to play. I was like, leave till when? They were like, she needs to be clear of COVID and then minimum six weeks later. This was already March, guys. Ah! I don't think I've cried that much in my life. I don't think so. I cried so much. Oh my God. <sighs> I don't think so. I don't think I've cried that much, you guys. I cried so much that when we, we had to leave the hospital, I, even my mom cried. You know, we left the hospital. We went home. We had to isolate for like another maybe one week. Then we had to go and get like COVID tests. And you guys, I don't know if you've ever had to do a COVID test for a child. It's not some. It's not like an adult one that you just do like this, do like this. No, it's that one that they go to the back, the PCR test. So we had to stay in the house. And guess what? All of us tested negative except her. I was negative, my husband was negative, my brother was negative, only her tested positive. I was like, God. Now, mind you, the doctor that was supposed to do the surgery, I would say his personality was, it was very clinical. He was not so empathetic, like, he was just doing his job. I don't begrudge him, he was just doing his job. But, ah. So that was the doctor, the first doctor that was supposed to do the surgery that day. He was like, you know, they would shave off her eyebrows and then they would, um, my daughter has really full eyebrows. I'm like, you know what, eyebrows will always grow back by the grace of God. You'll see how best they can cut and do the surgery, remove the cyst, stitch it back and hopefully the eyebrows grow over. 
a concern that we had is you know have you not met some people that they have a stitch on their brows that their the hair never grows on that area again so those are some of the concerns you know that i had I was like you know what for the holistical or yeah holistic holistic you know benefits of the surgery was eyebrows they will always grow back or even if they don't grow back when she's older she can always use like makeup and if it bothers her so we had to go home we isolated for i would say maybe another maybe like two weeks um no church again so that's like maybe about one month now that we hadn't gone to church i wasn't going my husband was going um and with her i was with her at home and she was cleared of covid eventually so i reached back i'm like oh hello um we're cleared of covid now in my whimsical head thinking that they're just okay yeah you can come back tomorrow and we'll do the surgery again they were like um oh we have no data at the moment because the surgery was not able to be done we have to wait and they can't really say i'm like but i now replied i'm like the doctor told us six weeks it was like well that's hypothetical we're not sure how long you're going to wait but we'll try to you know hasten it hey i was like you know what i was so overwhelmed i was like you know what? i need a holiday so my friend is like um now this is already april april you know we had the, the event in march so this was already like april my daughter's birthday my that's the second, second birthday is in june by the way just have those dates in mind and it was like april my, my friend just reached out to me she knew about everything my friend tired she had some work trip in um turkey istanbul and she was like you know what she wants to go to istanbul like for work that do i want to come i'm like you know what sis i need the break i need the mental break we're just gonna go together so i went online i booked the flights for turkey now this is not the turkey trip that i went for but I, i'm coming to that we were supposed to go together me and my friend i was just staying i was not supposed to pay for hotel fees because i mean she had a hotel booked we were just supposed to stay with her i'll pay for my daughter's flight and my own flight or like you hey, we'll just go just for mental health clarity until um they get back to us with the city with this you're like cool so i booked my flight for, i think um the middle of april and everything was good so let's say we're supposed to go to turkey next week to the glory of god they called us back like a week before the trip i'm rushing because i i need to go somewhere now well i'll try and be as detailed as possible so they called us they were like um um oh hi Th there was a lady that called me this time one time i said that their number i had some more joy ah god they will not be rejoicing for medical calls though. i had so much joy in my heart i was like they were like oh um we found a slot for you it was that weekend i was supposed to travel i think but she was like we found a slot for you but um they suggest that because of this past experience we should isolate we should not go anywhere oh yeah i think we should not go anywhere for the for the period and just stay oh yes yeah, sorry i think it was now the the, sur the new surgery that they gave us was now in may i think uh, yeah may around the 20th of may so i was like you know what wisdom is profitable to direct let me not go anywhere yeah i think sorry i'm mixing up the dates yeah the, the surgery was supposed to be may correct but i think my trip with my friend was supposed to be the first week in may so this was at the end of april that they called us yeah so they gave us like a two weeks advance notice two or three weeks notice I was like, this has been over a year, guys. So, and I didn't check, I didn't write all the specific dates down because it's not, it's not necessary. So, um, for this video, so I said to the house, like, hey, you know what? I already had a trip planned, but I'm gonna cancel that ticket now. I'll move it for, I think, um, three weeks after the surgery. She's like, oh yeah, it should be okay to fly. That children heal faster than adults. I was like, and I said to him, like, please, I don't want to go through the ordeal of, um, doing blood blood transfusion again, and then having to do covid tests can we do the covid test first she was like oh absolutely that even the doctor said no blood transfusion until the covid results are out so i was like okay good so i was so happy i told my husband i'm like ah god we are we're so grateful for this second chance so i pray there hey god you guys i pray you know i pray but now i truly know understand what when you love somebody i pray i say god let your mercy prevail please let everything go well so this time fast forward to the day of the new surgery date went to the hospital the first thing as soon as we entered they took us to a lab we had the covid test done they did a fast track covid result that we get the result literally under an hour so we got the result and glory of god everything was clear everybody in the department they were so happy and they took us to a new ward now they are changed the doctor this new doctor he was literally god sometimes when god does things we don't really understand that our god is a god of detail this new doctor extremely empathetic he came to the room before, like a day before, he was sat down, he played with Harry Ray. He was a Caucasian doctor, white, older male. He told me that he will make sure he does not shave her eyebrows. You guys, even to the minor details, that he will raise it in such a way that they will do the surgery 
with his own skill you know that God had blessed him with and they would try not to touch any part of our hairs of our eyebrows I was so grateful he came he marked it he tried to use a marker which they did not do previously the previous experience that we had and obviously we had to go through the process of fasting again they drew our blood and obviously they said the doctor is not just comfortable that he would still want her to take a blood transfusion but I was happy with this one that okay you know when we take this blood transfusion at least there's no we're still going to have the surgery we take the blood transfusion this one was even more grill some because she already understood what it meant when the cannula came my daughter is so strong as small as she she fought like we had to get like four four like nurses to hold her down and two, four nurses three nurses and one doctor to hold her down they put it inside the blood transfusion i was sat beside her i couldn't do anything i was just trying to work on my laptop just to you know get my mind off it everything was okay i just started hearing beep, 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 beep. hey my heart flew out of my chest again i was like god what is this the nurse now came and said that the thing was inserted wrongly so her hand was swelling hey you guys another another truckloads of waterworks i started to cry again my husband was already even he, his eyes were red you know i was so emotional they now said i should not worry that it would subside because this was still a day before the surgery so they removed it like you know it's fine she doesn't need any more blood that one i'm just trying to you know come surprise the story surgery gate came she was very hungry we had to go and clear liquids but to the glory of god they told me that the surgery would take about an hour so what they did was when they took her to the surgery suite they told me to hold her, I hugged her, then they gave her like, um, I think, um, what do you call it, an, an, the anesthesiologist was there. And because she's really young, we were very careful. Um, she was almost two at that time, this was a month to her second birthday. And they put the easy injection now and I saw my daughter like, she looked like she was fading away. There was, she was drooling. That was another, they, they told me to leave because I was already, they could see that I was visibly upset. I was already crying. So I left. So they took her into the ward. They told me that the surgery would take an hour at most, you guys. One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. I did not see my daughter. Hey, what's it, Bryson? Suko, I started to weep like I was crying and shaking so uncontrollably that where I sat, the CCTV camera, I think they, maybe the security people they saw me crying so much that they had to send people to come and check if this lady was okay. They were like, Are you okay? Are you being abused? Because my husband was sitting down there and he was like, ah, He was looking at me, I was just shaking. I was like, no, I'm fine. That I'm just waiting for my daughter to come out. They're like, okay, they'll see what's going on. Maybe like after 30 minutes after that, I just saw them pushing my daughter out, you know, like on a stretcher. She had like huge bandage on her eye. <sighs> I was uh, happy. She was like, she saw me. She was like, mommy, another tears. And I'm like, why did it take so long? They were like, it took a while to wake up from the anesthesia. That they wanted to ensure that she was awake. And the first time my daughter saw me, she was like, she's hungry. Ah, uh, I was like. I gave up. I'll see if I can insert clips here. I was so happy. The surgery was done. Everything. They told, the doctor came and explained to me that he was happy that I took it. That I took everything out, including the sack. That by the grace of God, he would not come back. You know, he showed. He was like, showed me the width that the thing was actually grown. We were not imagining things. It was actually like a stone, like actual stone, maybe like this. And they were like, okay, that after like they, they put out medication, obviously, just to ensure that she doesn't fall sick and all of that after because of the anesthesia and obviously the surgery and all her eye was very swollen but it subsided everything went well after that, I will mean, say maybe like three weeks you know I'd moved my flights we now decided to go to Turkey just me and her so when I was saying in that video that I needed that trip you guys you probably did not understand so we had a good time we came back two weeks later we flew again back to Turkey by another city this time the first time I went to Istanbul we went to Antalya as a family trip for her second birthday and to the glory of God the cyst was gone it was still swollen obviously because fresh um, um, injury or sights but everything had gone now fast forward to a year after now you can't even tell that we had this experience you can't even tell that so in fact when my friends always say that where was it done I have to now be, nothing was done with the eyebrows to the glory of God everything went well and I'm just so grateful to Jesus Christ for this testimony that you know we did not need to spend a dime you know the only dime maybe we spent on was for biscuits and the holiday expenses you know we did not go for the surgery and come out with even more worries everything went well you know to the glory of God so I'm just so grateful to God that you know for early intervention 
you know, pressing on the NHS as well. And God, you know, just favored us. And the entire surgery, you know, went well. And as I said, fast forward now, anytime I look at her, I'm like, ah, oh God, I think. Because I don't even know how much the thing would have grown to this at this level. Now, my daughter is going to be three, literally next month. And I'm just thankful to God that, you know what, what the devil wanted to use it to ruin my joy. You know, God found it. We're even using medicine. Because God could have just, I could have just touched that eye, prayed, and God would have healed her. But I did that several times. And God still chose to, you know, through medicine to heal or to, you know, to remove that thing from our body, that foreign object. So I thank God for that. So that's really my experience with dermatitis. I hope that with this video, you were able to, you know, learn a few things, especially as a parent, you know. I know no, no parents is negligent, but I've heard cases of people that they had things and people, they told them not to worry, but that maternal instinct will always tell you when to, when to get things done. My mom, she tried her best too from Nigeria. There is no cream she did not send, but I knew that it was something that needed to be taken out. It was not, it was not a swelling, it was an object, you know, so I thank God and that's gone and it will never come back again, ever, ever, thank God. Um, yeah, so that's my story and testing well, sorry i go a bit teary and i don't think i've ever cried on my channel but yeah um that's what happened so that's about it for this video um rejoice with me i thank god and this is my child oh, so many testimonies maybe in the future i literally just you know felt the leading to share this one today so i pray that um, every parent that maybe is going through any health challenge with their child that you receive help that even supernatural help some of you might know it might never need surgery in jesus name that even the hand of god will touch them and the creative miracles of god will be your portion and if you're not even a child maybe it's you yourself or your sibling or somebody anybody going through any health challenge I pray that, you know, good health, because I always say that that's the covenant I have with God, a covenant of good health, and that extends to my children as well. So, thank you so much for watching this video. So, this video will not be two hours long, um, and um, to God be the glory. And thank you so much. I don't know what to say again, but thank you so much for watching, and um, speak to you soon. Bye, guys.